Welcome to session 16 of Complexity Explorer's MESA tutorial, Agent-Based Modeling in Python. In this session, we'll do part 3 of 4 of our Trader's Trade algorithm. In this case, we'll really be able to do the first half where, uh, of the trade algorithm where we look at how to transfer spice from one agent to another. All right, let's get started. Please open up your IDE or your Google Colab instance. So make sure our sugarmap.txt file is accessible either by manually uploading it or mounting our drive. We import our dependencies. Now at this point we have one helper function with get distance. We have our sugar and spice classes. Then we have our trader class. In this one, uh, our trade function is where we'll be working. So far we've calculated our price based off our marginal rates of substitution for our agents. And then this is all part of our trade with neighbor functions, where we call our uh, trade function. Then have our model class, which manages the interactions between the agents. When we run that, we can see our prices. With the price calculated, now we can start to figure out the exchange uh, of sugar to spice for each agent. If our price is greater than one, then p units of spice uh, are traded for one unit of sugar. And if our price is less than one, and 1 over p units of sugar uh, are traded for 1 unit of spice. So the way we need to capture this in code is we need to compare the MRS uh, of ourself versus the marginal rate of substitution of the other. That way we can figure out uh, how to set the price and how to establish the flow of sugar units to spice units uh, for each agent. To this, we're going to build another helper function where uh, called maybe underscore cell underscore spice. So this is going to take several parameters. First, it's going to take another agent object that's going to take the price that we just calculated, which is a geometric mean between the MRS of ourself and the MRS of the other. And then it's going to take uh, the welfare of ourself and the welfare of uh, the other agent. Now, unfortunately, we've already calculated this. This is the Cobb Douglas function uh, that we calculated two lessons ago. I mentioned briefly last lesson, we just call our calculate welfare function for both the agent or self and then the other agent who are considering a trade. We'll just create another local variable called welfare self and then we'll call our function uh, calculate welfare. Now it takes uh, welfare takes two parameters, self dot sugar and self dot spice. Right, so once we do it for the self agent, now we need to do it for the other agent. Another local parameter, parameter welfare underscore other, and then we just call it do other dot calculate welfare. And passing in two parameters, in this case other dot sugar and other dot spice referencing the other agent's sugar and spice attributes. Okay, you can see here uh, my price is underlined red. And that's because I actually named my local variable p. So I'm going to change that to price right, and just add a helper function here. So again, what this is actually calculating is what's called the geometric mean. We take the self uh, MRS of self times other right, and then take the square root of that. Okay. Uh, again, this is also using the Cobb-Douglas function to calculate welfare. You get a description of that and its importance on page 97 of the Growing Artificial Societies. Uh, we're also going to add up here the comments because we use it for uh, self.move. That we, we're using this in the trade function. That way, if we later in we come to make changes or make adjustments, we can have a better understanding uh, of how it might break the model or all the places that will influence that. So now that we have this done, we've got to build a helper function. This is a helper function uh, for trade. I'm going to put it right above the trade algorithm. Again, this is going to be called uh, maybe uh, cell spice. And it's going to take several parameters. So first self, uh, and then the other agent, then the price and the welfare of self, and the welfare of other. 
next lesson, this is going to get interesting because the flow just reverses, and so we'll be able to leverage the parameters uh, in order to uh, reduce the amount of repetition in our code by just switching who's self and who's other. All right, but this is uh, so put some comments. Right? So uh, helper function for self dot trade. Now we want to try and calculate uh, what's going to be exchanged. All right, so they'll be exchanging sugar and spice. Right? And this will require another helper function. So uh, I'll create two returns on this one: sugar exchange and spice exchange. Right? And then we need to calculate the sell spice amount, and we'll pass in the price to do this. All right? And all of this can be found on page 105 of the Growing Artificial Societies textbook. As you see, it's a pretty straightforward uh, calculation. So to calculate the sell spice amount by passing in the price, first create our helper function, and that's just going to take two parameters, self, since it's part of the trader class, uh, and then price. All right, then we add our comments. going to be a helper function for maybe sell spice. This really, uh, and this is then going to be used to determine how much spice uh, or sugar uh, is being traded for each unit of spice or sugar based off uh, the price that was established. So if the price is greater than one, uh, then it's uh, p units of spice for one unit of sugar, and if it's less than one, then it's one over p units of sugar for one unit of spice. And so we just write this out. If price is greater than or equal to one, then the sugar equals one, and the spice, right, is going to equal the integer uh, of the price. And vice versa, else. So if it's less than one, then the sugar is going to equal int one over the price. And the spice uh, and the spice will equal one. Right, and then this will return uh, your sugar and spice. And this gives the amount of sugar and spice to be exchanged based off the price that was calculated uh, using the geometric mean uh, per the previous uh, functions in this algorithm. Okay. So this will give us a nice unit where we might have like four units of spice for one unit of sugar, or if it's the other way, um, it might be you know, four units of sugar for one unit of spice. All right, now that that's completed, We've identified how much sugar and spice need to be exchanged. At loops, and to prevent agents from trading uh, in a manner that's not supportive to their welfare, we have to establish some criteria uh, to, to stop the trade uh, if it's not actually helping the agents. All right, so now we'll establish that criteria, which is that does the trade make both agents better off, right? So it increases the welfare of both agents. Right. And does it not cause the marginal rate of substitutions to cross one another? Right. So that is that there uh, that the value of the trade is no longer useful. And so if any of those are met, then the then we want to stop. Then we don't actually want to follow through with the trade. So to do this, we actually have to uh, similar to our kind of uh, some of our previous functions. We need to plan out what happened if the sugar actually is exchanged, and does this meet the criteria? So we need to create some more local variables. Self sugar right, will equal the self dot sugar plus the sugar exchanged. Right? Then we'll look at the other sugar and do other underscore sugar equals other dot sugar minus uh, sugar exchanged 
then we'll do the same for the spice. All right, so self underscore spice, right, equals self dot spice plus spice exchanged. Correction, minus spice exchanged. Sorry, that's a big one. It's self dot spice minus spice exchanged because uh, the MRS is higher, so the, uh, the spice is the one being reduced. And then we'll switch this in the next lesson. All right, and then other underscore spice equals other dot spice. Right, plus spice exchange. All right, so now we've figured out the flow of the exchange of uh, sugar and spice. Okay, so I check these and make sure your plus and minus signs are going the right direction. So they have very small difference that could result in dramatically different results. Okay, so now that we've kind of uh, created these simulated or these variables, we can assess whether or not this trade uh, or this exchange of sugar. The first check is to make sure that they actually have these resources of sugar and spice indeed to conduct the to conduct the trade. So if uh, so, we're just going to do a couple uh, a couple greater or less than and equal to signs here. So if self that sugar is less than uh, or equal to zero, or other underscore sugar is less than to equal less than or equal to zero. Put everything in parentheses here. Or, okay, open parentheses, self underscore spice is less than or equal to, to zero. Okay, so remember, this is all at this point just simulating uh, or assessing whether or not the exchange can occur. That's why we're using the underscore spice versus the dot spice. We're not actually looking at the attribute, we're looking at what we anticipate the attribute to be. So, and then other underscore spice is less than to equal to zero. If any of these conditions can occur where they don't have enough sugar or spice to conduct the trade, this is for one unit of sugar or one unit of spice, right, then we return false and the trade's not going to occur. Okay, so now that we've made sure that they have enough resources, now we can check these other criteria to ensure that, uh, that this is in the agent's best interest and it actually increases their welfare and doesn't decrease their welfare. This also has the added benefit of ensuring that we don't create an infinite loop where agents just keep on trading uh, uh, forever and ever. Right, so the trade criteria, criteria number one, and this is found again on page 105, right, is that are the agents better off? And so to do this, we need to make sure that with their new uh, sugar and, and spice, uh, so this is the underscore sugar and uh, and underscore spice, right, that both agents are better off. So create a local variable called both agents better off. This will be another uh, true or false. So is the welfare of self uh, less than the calculated welfare? All right, so remember, we created a welfare of self uh, uh, previous, or we pass that in as a parameter from our trade function. And then we got to calculate our welfare using the self.sugar uh, and self.spice variables. All right, so if it's less than, uh, that, then that will return true. If it's not, then that will return false, effectively saying that the criteria is not met. And then we got to do the same for the welfare of the other. So we use an and statement right, with an open parentheses. The welfare of under, underscore other is uh, less than the other calculate welfare, other underscore sugar, right, and other underscore spice. Okay, so if both these criteria are true, then both agents are better off. Right? If either of these criteria is not true, then both agents better off is false, right? and we know that the trade is not in their best interest. Okay, you want to make sure that the, uh, each subcondition of welfare underscore spice, uh, welfare underscore self, and welfare underscore other are kind of in the parentheses just to keep everything clean. And now that 
that's done, we look at our trade criteria number two, which is that um, that the marginal rates of substitution are not crossing. I want to see exactly what's happening through this algorithm as it kind of incrementally exchanges sugar and spice between agents. You can look on page 106, which shows the Edgeworth, Edgeworth box representation. Uh, again, this is important because it demonstrates the integration of uh, microeconomic theory into our uh, agent's behavior, uh, which does add some extra validity to it uh, as it then helps us as we then get uh, predicted results as a way to validate our model. Right? So we want to verify that our MRS, our marginal rates of substitution, are not crossing where somebody actually doesn't want to exchange their particular um, commodity. So MRS underscore not crossing. So again, I'm just using a true or false return on this. Right, and then self dot calculate MRS is greater than the other dot calculate MRS. Okay, so these two criteria will turn both uh, true, both need to be true in order for the trade to continue. And then if either one is false, so we say, okay, this isn't in the best interest of the agents, and we're going to stop the trade. I've written quite a bit of code at this point, which probably means I have several mistakes in here that I need to correct. So let's see if it works. So I'll do a print statement to look at these true or false uh, outputs. Uh, and sure enough, I have an attribute error where trader object uh, has no attribute calculate spice uh, cell amount because I wrote, uh, I misspelled the, uh, the function. The intense session where plus and minus signs and how you uh, organize your parentheses do have an impact on whether or not it returns true or false, which will have a likewise cascading impact across the rest of the performance of your model. So after I fi fix my calculate function, run it again, and now I get a type error where it says it takes one positional argument, but two were given. So I need to go back up to calculate self spice about, and it looks like I forgot my self, self parameter. Uh, which is part of the trader class will cause an error. So I run that. So we are getting true and false statements that tell us whether or not the potential trade meets the criteria we need it to. And as you can see, some are false and some are true. This is half of the algorithm where we're looking at the sugar and spice flow in one direction. The next lesson will complete that looking at the sugar and spice flow in the opposite direction. Right, and then that will wrap up our trading algorithm where we can then transition to collecting data and analyzing it. Uh, thank you for your time and we'll see you in session 17.